Hello Fern fans, it's day 26 already of having a lot of puppy fern with us and today we're going to do a, a, a video in the you know, continuation of the playlist which I've got on YouTube about how dogs learn or how we want to teach dogs and this relates sort of not how they learn everything day to day but how we give them commands. So I always say, I keep harping on and if you've watched a few more videos I've probably bored you to death about it that dogs don't communicate verbally or with, with much sound. All of their, or the majority of their communication is done using body language and, and signaling to each other through the body and what the body is doing and, and to transmit messages to each other that way. Um, with that in mind, the fact that they don't use much sound and they use a lot of body language we need to understand that as well when we are trying to pass our messages to the dog. So for example, sit or down or come here or wherever it may be, wherever you want to tell your dog to do or ask your dog to do. What we do when we're talking or communicating to dogs, because we are verbal as a species, we expect them to be in. And we do a lot of talking to the dogs and that just becomes white noise. The dogs don't really hear it or need to hear it because that's not how they communicate. So. Whilst we're running around shouting, come here, come here, sit, down, whatever it may be that we're shouting over and over again, it just becomes white noise to the dogs. They don't pay any attention to it or very little attention. If we know that... Good kid. If we know that, we can try and use it to our advantage. So we don't need to be giving the, word, the, the dog loads of words of command. We can just give it some commands using body language. So let's take teaching the dog to sit. There are stages in how you teach a dog an action. Now, when we teach a dog to sit, what we're trying to do, if you think back to all my other videos, we're not teaching the dog to sit. We're teaching the dog the association between the dog putting the bum on the floor, us being really happy, the dog getting a reward of some, some kind, whether it be praise, uh, affection, us visually showing it we're happy, a treat, a toy, food, whatever it may be, that's some kind of praise and that's what a dog ultimately wants. So we need to help that dog learn the association with a dog giving us a behaviour which is pleasing, the dog earning, earning a reward for it, and then ultimately we giving the command to the dog and the dog doing that behaviour. So let's take teaching the dog to sit. Break it down into stages. The first stage you need to accomplish is getting the dog to give you that behaviour. So you're not saying anything at this point, you're just getting the dog to put the bum on the floor. When the dog does put the bum on the floor, you give it praise, so a tickle, a treat, a sweet, some food, tell it good boy, whatever it may be. And you repeat that over and over and over again. Repetition and consistency is what dog training is based on. Here you go. So we're going to repeat getting the dog to give us that good behaviour. The dog's then going to start thinking, every time I put my bum on the floor, he really loves that and I get something good. So it's going to keep doing it. It's going to try and force you to give it that reward by keep putting its bum on the floor. So once it's learned that behaviour, then you're going to add a command to it. So only when the dog really is, is fluent and competent at sitting properly how you want it, you're then going to start saying sit. Now you're going to start saying sit as the dog puts the bum on the floor. You're not going to say sit and expect it to all of a sudden have learned English and know to put his bum on the floor. You're going to do it as it's doing that behaviour or giving you that behaviour. So basically at this stage, all you're doing is telling the dog what it's doing at the time it's doing it and then you're going to reward it. So wait till it sits, say sit, and then praise it. Good girl, give it a nice little tickle, give it a treat, whatever it may be. So we've gone from phase one, or stage one, or step one, of getting the dog to give you that behaviour. Step two, of then naming that behaviour and telling the dog what it's doing. So every time the bum touches the floor, you're telling it what it's doing. Step three from there is then if you want to, associating some kind of hand signal or body language or wherever it may be to that action. So as it's sitting, as it's about to sit, 
Bum touches the floor. For me, that's a the sign for sit. So as the bum touches the floor, I say sit, and then a second later, I lift my hand. Now that's really important that you say the word first, then give the hand signal. Because a dog is primarily based on body language and looking for things, if you said them at the same time, it wouldn't have heard you saying sit, it's just going to see that. So it's very important the dog touches the floor, you say sit, and then hand up or give the sign, whatever it may be. That's stage three, so stage one, go again. Get the dog to give you behaviour. Stage two, tell the dog what it's doing, so sit. And then stage three, add in signals or signs or body language into it. So sit and then signal. And then from there, you can start to, once the dog's learned that, you can then uh, tell it to do that command. So you can say sit, hand up, split second later. If you're going to start going sit or sit with that delay or with them at the same time, the dog's only going to pay attention to the hand, it's not going to be listening to anything. It's really important that you get that, because if you start doing them at the same time, the dog will be really good at sitting when you do that, but then if you went out somewhere and you had bags full of shopping and you told the dog to sit, it wouldn't know what it means. So you've always got to do it in that order, like I haven't always got to do it, but that's the best way uh, to imprint that behaviour in the dog, along with those commands and along with those um, hand signals, wherever it may be. Further down the line, what I do, then I start adding whistle commands in. Uh, now a whistle command is just a sound. You're just blowing the whistle and it's just a sound. The same way a word of command or whatever word you're making is just a sound. People think a dog whistle is mysterious, especially these ones that are a higher uh, frequency than humans hear. Because we can't hear them, you think, wow, it's, it's mysterious and a dog automatically knows to sit. And all it is is a sound. The dog can hear it and you've helped that dog associate that sound with an action or a behaviour. Um, so later on down the line, the order I do it in is I get the dog to exhibit the behaviour, then I give it a command, a, a, a verbal command, then I'll give it a sign or a, a hand signal or a signal, body language signal, and then after that I'll add a whistle command to it as well. Now you can add a whistle command and a sound, a, a verbal sound to the same command. You can have 10 different words if you wanted, or sounds that mean the same thing. As long as you can associate that in the dog's mind, uh, you can have a whistle. I've, I've taught my dog, the dog that's in here now, you can't see it because it's black and it's dark, that when I say in your cage, she walks up to the cage, opens the door with her nose and goes in the cage. She also knows if I point at it, that's body language, that it means go in your cage and lie down. What I'm going to start working on is I'm going to ring the doorbell and every time the doorbell rings that's going to be a sign for her to go in the cage because long term down the line if we have visitors to the house we want the dog automatically to go in the cage, lie down, be calm whilst we go to the door and do whatever we need to do there. Uh, so there's th three different things there that are happening. The dog's doing it on the voice command in your cage, the dog's doing it when I point at the cage and the dog will do it when I uh, ring the doorbell or when the doorbell rings. So that's three different things. So it's not just one command, one action. You can have 10, 20, 30 different actions as long as you teach them properly. What you can't have though is one word meaning different things and the best example of that is down. So if you tell a dog down, some people say sit down and then some people say lie down, and some people say get down, and some people say jump down. And it's, it's basically the same sound four times with four different meanings, and you're expecting a dog to know what you mean, and it's just confusing. So one sound to one action. Um, so I'll run through that again. First thing you do is get the behaviour off the dog and show it that you're really pleased with that behaviour. So sit on the floor, as soon as she sits, you're pleased with that behaviour, you let her know. And then she'll start thinking, how can I make him pleased? I'll sit down and give him that behaviour that's really good and it gets me a um, reward. Once that's drummed into the dog's brain, it's really in there well, then you're going to start giving it a command or a sound. 
So as the bump touches the ground, you say sit, you're telling it what it's doing. Stage three after that is if you want to add a hand signal. So, and, and the hand signal comes, or the body language comes a split second after the verbal. So sit, and then after that I add a, a whistle, or another sound to it, because I always take the dogs out with a whistle as well. The whistle tends to work better than sound, uh, work, sorry, the whistle tends to work better than voice, because it's really consistent, and you don't really have to shout, you don't have to be worried about who's around you. Um, your voice changes day to day, depending on your, your sleep, your eating, have you drunk caffeine, alcohol, or anything like that, where a whistle just stays consistent. So I find it works better. And, uh, and, and that's, that's it for that stage. Now what I'm also gonna do is film the video tomorrow, maybe the day after, with this dog, showing you those things in action. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna give the dog a verbal command, and I'm gonna give the dog a body language command, and then I'm going to give a different kind of, I'm going to communicate with that dog different ways and show you guys the outcomes. And then hopefully you can understand a little bit better how to communicate with the dog, how to train a dog, how to pass the message that you want the dog to receive onto the dog without all the white noise and the background noise and the stuff that the dog doesn't really listen to. If you can do that better, then life's uh, a, lot, a lot less stressful. It's, it's really enjoyable going for a nice little walk with a nice calm dog that stays by you and it's as if you've got a secret understanding it's as if the dog's psychic and you can just think what you want the dog to do and it'll go and do it and if you can do that you'll be you'll really enjoy your time with the dog and you'll be really happy with yourself so that's that's my outcome at uh, my goal and hopefully that uh, that could be the outcome too and hopefully we can all enjoy our dogs a little bit better together